Right, back to the scanning. We've been at a rotary this morning. I'm joining uh, Bianca. We've got two of the techs with us as well, Annabelle and Leah. And yeah. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, a rotary and a herringbone are two styles of milking shed. Rotary sheds have cows get on on a circular platform which goes around like a merry-go-round. And the cows normally get off after one full 360 trip, by which point they finish milking. A herringbone, on the other hand, is arranged in, you guessed it, a herringbone pattern when viewed from above. The cows walk in on one of two sides, the milker attaches clusters from a central pit, and once each side is done, they walk out of the front. Herringbones normally go a bit slower, so they're perhaps a bit easier for a learner like me just to take a bit more time, a bit easier to find the fetus and age it. Saying that, the rotor we did this morning was also really useful because it just does force you the speed to look harder, look faster. So yeah, two sorts of milking sheds, I think for a learner, sort of complement each other. We'll get into it. We've got the screen, so hopefully, although I'll have my goggles on, I'll be looking at that, we'll be able to tap the screen into what I'm looking at and you can see that on the GoPro. Anyway, we'll zoom there. So Annabelle's got the screen here, nothing interesting on there at the moment, but that will read out what I'm seeing in my goggles at some point, won't it Annabelle? At well. At well. First, the cows have to line up for us on one side of the herringbone. Unlike the cows we did this morning who came onto the rotary for their usual morning milking, these cows have already been milked. We're here about 10 a.m. and cows are creatures of routine, so they're slightly perplexed as to why they're back already. They soon get the picture though, and Bianca sets to work scanning from the front. Now I chopped this footage here, but I reckon the average time spent in each cow is maybe five seconds or less. In that time, an experienced scanner like Bianca collects a lot of information, not only whether the cow is in calf or not, but also what age of pregnancy, checking for a heartbeat, whether there are twins or not, and also picking up the weird and wonderful, like infections of the uterus, cystic ovaries, mucus seals, and any signs that an early pregnancy is slipping, i.e. starting to be lost. And some of those pregnancies are less than one centimeter in length. In other words, about the size of your thumbnail. As for me, I'm working from the back once the side is filled and it takes me about five seconds just to get the probe in, let alone find a pregnancy. The plan here is for me to do a handful in each race before B scans them for real and lets me know how close or far I was on the aging. It takes me a lot longer and I've got a pot of lube to use between cows, but I'm conscious not to spend too long looking for the sake of the cow. So if I can't find anything, I just move on to the next one. The aging is based on a few factors, mainly size, but some other things too, like how well their bones are formed. I wanted to show you these pregnancies on the screen, but it seems to be misbehaving today. So I'll show you in another video soon. I'm aiming to be within five days of their true age. How did I do? Let's find out. You go for 70. Uh, well, how big are you? 65? Pardon? Oh, get in. Oh. Right, ding. I'm going to get a nice sound effect on there. What did I say? You said 75. Oh, what, what, what is she? I'm not sure you 
Probably 73. 73? What did I say? 75. Oh, shit, sorry. I said 65. What did I say? One day, yeah. <laughs> well, see, no, it could be 76. Could be 76. What is it? Right, that's the only race I'm doing now. Like, I'm just... <laughs> Fantastic. You really nailed it, how you feel? I mean, credit where credit's due, eh? <laughs> <laughs> only how many's in a race? About... 20 a row? No, you'll get more, you're going to more than 8 units. Okay, so I've done 4, 5? Yeah. Ah! You've so, done 4 out of 17. <laughs> but they were right. <laughs> Do you, yeah. Depend, well, it depends if you're being paid per hour per cow. No, I'm just a freebie, I'm afraid. I'm a hanger on. There's nothing quite like an ego check. Now, B does have one small advantage which helps improve the accuracy and speed of aging and it's a great example of how the bigger practices here use A, technology and B, vet techs to get these big jobs done quickly and smartly. So, while I continue to work away at the back of the shed, here's my new co-presenter Annabelle to explain a bit more. Right, he's left you with me. So we are going to explain what Leah is doing. So Leah's one of our techs, like meat. And so we do the recording for scanning. So essentially, B's scanning over there. 194 is 68 days. So what, what we do no date. is we put the tags in and it brings up a date of how many days since they were AI'd or mated. Cow 57, 47 days. Nice. So we use a um, system called InfoVet that um, farmers load their cows into Minder, Cow Minder 18, and InfoVet no speak together and as the cows are AI'd or bull mated, their matings are put in to InfoVet. So then when we're recording, sometimes the vets are blind aging, which is what Kaz is doing, um, which means that there's no dates in, so they are just going off the size and this is not blind aging, they have the dates. So this is a lot easier than blind aging. Yeah. Yeah. What do you have to say about that, Leah? LGA? Get away from me. <laughs> no paparazzi, please. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, how do I turn this off? And that's the scanning done. A steady 300 in a couple of hours. We get washed up. I evict a farm cat who seemingly wants to hitch a ride and we get a welcome cold drink. Werner, the farmer here, has put his garage to good use. As vets, we often get a brew after our visits, but not often in such style. I'm just not sure where Werner found the time to kit this place out because he is a busy man. He had a proper film crew here the day before to cover a riparian planting project he's carried out. A bit more about that in the video description. He wasn't born into farming or even in New Zealand. I think he'll have lots of cool things to share with us and he very kindly gives us five minutes to talk about his farm, his cows, and his system. So we'll, t we'll just, I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll stick this like here. Is that about right? Cool, so that's all the scanning done. Yeah. Gonna pinch Werner for five minutes just to talk about the farm a bit. So Werner, this is your place. Yeah. People will be able to tell, I'll come close to you so you can, people can hear you but people would be able to tell by your accent, you're not a native Kiwi. No. <laughs> are you? It's from the Southern Hemisphere, but yeah. where are you from originally? Originally from South Africa. You weren't always farming, were you? No, 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 no. I was, I was never a farmer. Um, when we bought this farm five years ago, it was the first time I ever farmed. And that was it? That was it. I, we, we got the farm and I mean, I, I'm very fortunate because I've got my brother-in-law and people around me that I could go, my, where do I start the track? And what were you doing before that? 
Uh, uh, just before that, I, I had a computer business up in Tauranga. Okay. And um, back in South Africa, I had a supermarket and I had a coffee factory. And but I, yeah. you wanted to be a farmer, dairy yeah. farmer. Yeah. And I'd say, based on today's scan, we'll bring up a, a little picture of the graph, mm -hmm. but I would say it's a bloody good scan. A bloody just to explain this, we talked about the InfoVet system earlier. This graph is part of the report it generates. The horizontal axis is weeks after the start of mating, and the vertical axis is the percentage of cows in the herd that have become pregnant by that point. The red dotted line is the target, and the blue line is the actual result. You can see the target, which in practice takes a lot to achieve, and if you get there, you're doing very well, wants a lot of cows to get in calf early on, specifically 78% in the first two cycles, or six weeks. Today's scan is almost exactly on the target, an excellent result. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I mean, we 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 do try and set like we we set, set quite a high standard for yeah. ourselves insofar as um, in calf uh, rates are concerned. Yes. Simply because um, it sets up the whole of next yes. season. Yes. Yeah. You know, um, if you if you have a have a really long calving, then that that impacts on days in milk on the other side. Um, if you have a long calving, people get more tired. It's it's drawn out. It's, it's less fun. You know, absolutely. It, it, it takes it takes a smile off your face. But um, yeah, so 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 as a consequence, um, uh, mating the mating period for us is, a, is an incredibly important period yeah. on the farm. We we try to take a lot of care um, with our selection of the cows. Yeah. With with trying to we, we use you know we use um, two forms of identification uh, or heat detection so what's that scratch pad so and we use a scratchy and and we, we do the paint yes um, okay and, and are you are you serving her if she has um the tail paint rubbed and or the scratchy off or do you want it's both and, and, and both yeah. Okay. Um, I think one of the, one of the, one of the dangers of, of mating is because we are we, we, you so intent on not missing a cow. Yeah. That you can uh, um, you can go too early. Yes. Um, and so so for me, it's important that that the the, the, the scratchy must be properly worn. But yes, and all gone. And if the scratchy is properly worn then the paint will be properly warm. Yeah. It's, a, it's a given. One thing that, that really helps that is if you keep the paint um, up to date. Like top, top. So it's top not just top. rubbing off, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, how long are you AIing for? We, this year we AI'd for seven weeks. Okay. Um, and then we had the bulls out um, for about four. Yeah. yeah four weeks. Um, and that was done and dusted. Yeah. So most of the cars we would have picked up here I'm trying to work out if it's AI all of them, calves. the AI calves. And they seem to call it AB here, like yeah. a, a artificial breeding. Yeah. But that's so that's what you want, you want those nice yeah. early calves. Yeah. And people will be able to see these lovely cows in the background and they would have seen them in the parlor. Like if you're, if you're in Britain or a lot of Europe or the States or Canada, mm -hmm. like they'll look tiny. Yeah. And, and there's some brown ones, yeah. right? <laughs> They're not all black and white. So yeah. presumably you're getting plenty of crossbreeding in. Yep. and reasonably intentional with that. The breeding objective for us in that sense is three, three or four main criteria mm -hmm. that, that, we, that is go no-go points for us. Yeah. The first is that it has to be an A2, what's it called, A1 protein-free protein cow okay. uh, in, 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 terms of the, in terms of the bull. The, the second thing is that our target cow is a, is a, is a black cow with a brown undertone um, and, and um, roughly 450 to 460 kilos. Okay, yeah. That's, and, and the reasons for those are, obviously we're, we, we, we beca we're moving towards becoming a 100% A2 milk supplier. Okay, do you uh, get a decent premium with that? A, and there's a premium yeah. for that, and so that's, that's the part of the incentive for that. The second uh, component, which is you know not black and white and not completely jersey, is that we are trying to breed a, a kiwi cross cow and the the theory behind that is that you get what they colloquially call hybrid vigor yeah um and and what we're looking for is obviously the the, the uh, production capabilities from the frisian like animal uh, in terms of volume and then the richness of the milk from the from the jersey and then the why we try and cap our cows at, at 450 460 kilos we we're very fortunate that um our the topsoil on this farm is roughly 500 mil all the way through, right through the farm yes and um that's great for grass growth it's great for it's it's, it's all good there's, there's there's nothing bad about that um and we have a, a real good clay pan under that um 
which means, and with us being surrounded by the hills, um, all that water runs through this farm, underneath this farm, on the way to the stream. Yes. So it makes it, uh, farm is, it stays green much longer, yeah. we, we much less prone, prone to drought and stuff like that. So all of those things are good. How, how that relates to the weight of the cows is come in the winter, Yeah. Um, if we had, you know, five, six hundred kilogram freezing stomping around, they'll month ago tear it up so yeah. absolutely it'll be you know um, it'll shredded be, it'll be a mug, mud bath and that's you know? that's a lot a big move away from that isn't there and yeah you know because yeah. there's no one no one likes to look at it the cows don't like it yeah gets mud in the river yeah and and, and i mean by the same token you know you, you, you the the having to repair that all the time yeah is, is, is ridiculously expensive yeah and then there's the environmental impacts that that could come from that and and, and how much longer it takes for that for that particular paddock to come back into the round if it's been if it's been pugged up and and that feeds into feed availability um, and, and all of that. Yeah, and cows can't eat mud. No, hundred um, percent. And then and then with a, with a four hundred fifty kilo cow, as long as as long as she delivers kilo for kilo, yeah, on her, uh, then she's a highly efficient cow. She eats a lot less, but she she delivers to her to her potential, and then you know you're golden. Sounds like a real nice roundup for the farm. <laughs> I'd be very pleased with today, anyway. But will you get? So will we have another scan at some point yeah. to do like a yes no. Yeah, we'll which do before a yes, they go no to scan. wintering. Yes, we'll do a yes no scan. This this one is an important one for me in terms of dating. Yes. Um, and then after that, it's like it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because it'll you can't change it in any case. No, no, no. Right. You know you've just got like some late ones. So yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be what it's going to be. Once we get the yes, no, that will determine who we take away for holiday. Yes. Because there's no point in taking them on holiday. If no, because yeah, holidays are expensive. Yes. Awesome. Thanks for that. That's All really right. cool, man. Easy. Cheers. <laughs>